Hi, welcome to Style Thoughts by Rita. In this video, I'm going to tell you a bit about my musings, thoughts, critiques, reflections on the capsule wardrobe concept. This is not a video where I have a hundred really cool pictures to show you. It's more like reflections from the heart. So I invite you to get really cozy and settle in for this moment together. <laughs> okay, so what is a capsule wardrobe? It is a thoughtfully curated collection of items that all share a similar color palette, tonal palette, general aesthetic. And the idea is that you maximize the effect of each garment by making sure that things can kind of be mixed and matched to create a large number of combinations, which then meet all of your sartorial needs. <laughs> and I guess capsule wardrobes have been around since the dawn of time, but I am specifically thinking about the emergence of the capsule wardrobe concept following the financial crisis in the 2000s. I was a teenager then, but I still so vividly remember because I was so interested in fashion. I really remember the shift from the Y2K over the top logomania glam stuff into the new, more minimal, somber, controlled looks of the post-financial system collapse fashion. This was also a time when a lot of online retailers emerged like Everlane that really emphasized quality over quantity. And the idea was like, well, we can't really get people to frivolously throw away $15 on a hot pink leopard print blouse. <laughs> So now we're going to convince you instead to give us $80 for this navy wool sweater by showing you the story about how the sweater is not just a sweater, but it is an investment piece that will work in 25 different ways and it will be with you forever and you will give it to your grandchildren, right? So that was kind of the narrative shift and it wasn't just the companies, it was online bloggers, these lookbook platforms and stuff. So there was this big cultural concept about how to make do with less because people literally had so much less money and also because that was just the trendy thing to go a bit more minimalist. And since then, the capsule wardrobe, I feel, has been kind of haunting the fashion world and my brain like a spooky fashion ghost. I don't want to oversell it and say like, oh, the capsule wardrobe, it's so like oppressive because obviously the rise of fast fashion and unchecked consumerism has also occurred since the financial crisis. So it's not to say that the capsule wardrobe is everything and it's the king of the universe, but I do think it has been quite a dominant narrative or a mental model for dressing that has been prevalent for a long time. So it's something I have thought about a lot and have had a lot of reaction. I did uh, try this mix and match minimal approach in a way that really didn't work for me. But I think what bothers me more about it and has bothered me more isn't even my personal experience, but it's just this idea that it's always there and being sold as this like method and system to do it right. And you know, I love systems. I love doing things the correct way. So that's been a bit my gripe with it. But now the years have gone by, I am a mature st independent style thinker now. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you my three kind of uh, main gripes with the capsule wardrobe and why I think it is not as good as it looks and seems. Before that, I wanna say that the capsule wardrobe actually is a really great model for wardrobing in some instances. For example, if you have a professional job where there is a stricter dress code or there you have a strong desire to really look minimal because your work is not about you drawing any attention to yourself and you just need a workable thing. I think the capsule wardrobe is a great idea. Or if you're in a bit of a tumultuous period in life where I don't know, like it's just too hard to keep track of clothes or clothes are not that important and things are getting dirty all the time. Maybe if you have little kids, you know, so you just wanna kind of like, just really hit pause on, on the fashion. So I think the capsule wardrobe, despite the critiques I'm gonna give, has its place. And I don't wanna like say that this approach is completely bad because it maybe sounds like that from my critiques. That being said though, 
Let me give you my critiques. So my first gripe is that the capsule wardrobe approach really sells you on this idea that you need to kind of set it and forget it, right? You plan your fall winter capsule, you have designed all the items that are going to go into it, maybe you're gonna buy one or two new pieces, but basically it's done and you're just wearing those outfits, you mix and matching stuff and it's done. And I think that this idea from the capsule wardrobe is really like this ideological thing that says you are a powerful, beautiful, capable being. You have such better things to think about than fashion and you don't want to waste your time shopping and thinking about clothes and trying stuff on. This way you have it all figured out and you can just do it and you can just go. And I think that it kind of, it's easy to take this to heart and think like, yeah, I need to, I need to streamline my life and make it easier. But it's like, okay, you reduce the chaos by using a capsule wardrobe approach, but at what cost, right? Cause I'm like, when you think about it, is it really a problem that it takes you time to shop or it takes you time to try clothes on or is it really that big of a problem that sometimes you put on an outfit in the morning and you think it's cute but by the afternoon you're like oh that's awful right are those really like problems in life because <laughs> to me they seem more just like experiences I really think you know it's just the playfulness the expression having fun with yourself can be such a great thing that fashion and style allows you to access whereas the capsule wardrobe is kind of like nah just decide and move on you don't need to think about it but it's like for most people you know we don't eat the same lunch and dinner every day for four months so it's like why would we want to have kind of like the same type of outfits over and over on repeat and I know that there's people that like to just have the same lunch or dinner and I know that there's people that love they just naturally gravitate to a capsule style wardrobe where they have a few tops and pants and they mix and match lived with some of those people wonderful but you know those people aren't on YouTube watching like a channel with 4,000 subscribers so I think it's safe to say we are a bit of a different group over here <laughs> and we are just more interested in fashion and more excited about it and get more out of it right so I think that there's something like a bit unpleasant with somebody coming in saying like you don't need to think about these things and you're like okay yeah maybe I don't but like maybe I want to <laughs> So that's the thing. First of all, just I think and trying to become that person that doesn't need to think about it I think can sometimes be really denying yourself this thing that is important to you The thing that lights you up and makes your day and I think that can be just really sad and unnecessary So that's the first thing Secondly, I also don't like about the capsule wardrobe that it is about creating a coherent aesthetic. Again, I've had a lot of clients and I've seen a lot of people online saying like, ah, my wardrobe is all over the place. I need to narrow it down to a specific aesthetic and just a few keywords and I need to get kind of the signature look. Okay, <laughs> first of all, I just don't think that for a lot of people, signature look or coherent aesthetic is a good goal. I think no matter how much you're working on your style and fashion, just again, the end point is not always like, oh, I have a really clear aesthetic. The end point can be, I have a lot of looks that match my many moods or I just like to have fun with fashion and I try things on here and there or I have four or five distinct style personalities and I nurture them accordingly, right? Why, why are those things inferior to the coherent aesthetic? In some ways, they're inferior if, for example, you wanted to be a influence blogger, right? Because there you need to have a brand that people recognize or if, yeah, in your life you want to create a signature visual brand, right? But for a lot of people, you can create a signature individual energy flavor profile without having one type of look. And I think that yeah, the, the capsule wardrobe boxes you in by necessity into this one aesthetic because things need to mix and match. Okay, but not only do I think like, okay, united aesthetic, coherent aesthetic is not the destination for everybody. I also think even if it's your destination, kind of like choosing what the aesthetic is gonna be and creating a capsule just based on that, it's like kind of a bumpy, challenging learning experience that's going to be a bit bitter for most people. 
because if you have previously had a very disunified closet, choosing a thing and then really committing to it, it's hard to really fill your needs for how you want to present and who you want to be. It's kind of a big commitment. And then if you don't like it, then you feel so bad. So it's kind of like a gamble risk thing. And I, it's not the worst thing in the world, right? Like. I created a capsule that I didn't love it, like fine. So I'm not saying it must be avoided at all costs, but I'm just saying it's a potential issue and it's something to be mindful of. And then, but my third and kind of main real gripe with the capsule wardrobe concept is that it's very difficult to create a capsule wardrobe where the outfits actually are interesting and meaningful. Usually the thing that defines a capsule is again how mix and match and how coherent it is which means that no one look really has any specific distinct features because especially you should be able to trade out accessories you should be able to trade out jackets or pants so that means nothing is really that special it's all just kind of the same and i think that this lack of specialness i think this lack of distinct looks is just not inspiring and it's not nourishing for the majority of people's hearts because again if we start with the capsule wardrobe we're like i want to do it right i have this system and i want to figure it out and we almost get into this like puzzle mentality where we think how am i going to create all these looks what pieces do i need and then in the end, because shopping is hard, it takes time, it costs money, you know, colors, the textures, the fabrics, it's easy to end up with just a lot of things that are very bland. And it doesn't have to be that way, but in many cases it is that way. And then, okay, you have all of these just really bland outfits where they're not bad, but nothing is really special about them. The problem with that is like, first of all, many of us just want to wear things that are a bit special and unique. I'm not saying you need things to be glamorous, over the top, whatever, but it, you want it to have more of a you flavor, which is easily lost in a capsule. And I think it's also something about self-esteem and the heart, where if you're telling yourself like, I'm just a person that deserves to wear a beige sweater with beige pants every day, it can feel like what I've seen with people is like, well, why can't I have more? You know, why is it other people that get to do these fun things? And for me, it's just the most simple stuff that's allowed. And I think that this is just very challenging when you created this wardrobe for yourself and it's supposed to be like solved all your problems, but it's not expressive enough. And I think even though perhaps you could create a capsule wardrobe that is really fresh, funky, unique, and original, I think this is very advanced level capsuling. So I think this is a critique really fairly of the entire capsule wardrobe approach that it leaves out the part where we want our looks to have some special things about them, to have a special and unique flavor, where we really want to use the looks to express something into the world. Okay, that being said, I do think that there are two things about the capsule wardrobe approach that are really valuable. First of all, is this mindfulness component. When we are living in this world with all of these corporations and their huge advertising budgets that just want us, don't think, just buy, you know, just go, oh, it's cute, I grab it. That's what they want. And it's very hard to resist when there's so many pretty things, shiny, beautiful, pretty new things out there. <laughs> And it's hard to resist, right? So training yourself to be more mindful and being like, okay, why am I bringing this into my closet? Is it going to go with the things I already own? Will I be able to create outfits with this? Is it fulfilling the needs I have for this season? Those are all great questions. And I think that the capsule wardrobe really encourages you to ask them. I think also the capsule wardrobe approach has this investment uh, angle to it where it says yes you know these boots may feel expensive but they are high quality and you will walk in them every day for months because they're one of your two pairs of boots so it's worth spending a bit more and for many of us who come from households where clothes was just extremely low priority or now like your clothes budget is not your family's priority it can feel like very edgy to be like, oh, I'm gonna invest in myself and get this stuff. 
and like of course you should not overspend blah 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 but like yeah you deserve it you deserve to have boots that are the comfortable ones or you deserve to have a sweater that's not gonna look all like you know pilly and kind of wrinkly and sad after a few wears and that means that there are special items that deserve you to spend extra money on them or extra time you know like thrifting looking for the higher quality more special item right and i think it's really good that the capsule wardrobe encourages you to think about that and kind of get over those hurdles <laughs> even though of course part of the reason is that they want to convince you to buy these expensive minimal basics but hey we take the good stuff so we can take these two good things the invest the willingness to invest in some pieces and the general mindfulness towards the closet and then we can like leave the capsule wardrobe approach maybe to those situations and those people for whom it really works but Rita what do we do instead okay I have two different approaches that you can do instead but I would say the main thing I wrote this down the main thing is what makes this outfit special or interesting is the core question to ask yourself. And this is completely different, I wanna stress, from the capsule wardrobe, where again, the idea is how many outfits can I create? Does this look okay? <laughs> like, does this look nice? You usually, it looks nice, good, you look nice. Like, that's the capsule wardrobe. <laughs> but you wanna, if you wanna move away from that and you wanna explore more expression and play and creativity, then you're asking yourself, what is it that makes this outfit special or unique? So the first approach for this style of dressing would be this kind of outfit-based approach. I, of course, learned this from David Kibbe, but it's not like he invented it, so I'm sure you learned it somewhere else too. Um, and the idea is that you kind of develop your wardrobe by adding in new outfits. One advantage of this approach is that it immediately breaks you out of the constraints of having to have an aesthetic because you can have two kind of edgy rebel outfits, two glam chic outfits, two sleek powerful outfits, right? There is no need for them to really match because the items belong to their own outfit and maybe you share a pair of pants or something between outfits but you don't need to be sharing stuff. Every outfit has its own accessories and everything. So then you're able to experiment and try out the different things you want. And that's a really cool thing with this approach. For me, this approach really works because it helps me to ask myself like, okay, what is the next step? Like, what do I want? So for example, I bought this dress because I was like, I want a dress that's really like flowy, free and easy, but that feels like winter appropriate at the same time. And when I bought this dress, then I designed this new makeup look. <laughs> and it goes with my existing winter coat and and boots but I bought a new hat for it I'm maybe gonna buy some newer earrings we'll see so I'm like designing the whole look from scratch but I bring in some existing things I have and that's the thing that really works for me what I really like about the outfits approach for me is also that I just create these kind of signature looks for myself when I was younger, <laughs> I used to feel like outfit repeating, you know, that's bad. And if I wear an outfit that's memorable, then I shouldn't wear it for a while. And then I was like, why do I think this way? First of all, I think it's because some kids were kind of mean to me about repeating outfits in middle school, classic. But it's also this kind of red carpet phenomena, right? The celebrities, they always have a new thing. So you should always have a new thing. And what I've now reframed it in my mind as is kind of like signature looks and I'm not repeating an outfit, I'm just owning the look, right? So this is going to be one of my go-to looks this winter. That means, you know, probably the I will go to a bunch of lunches with the same person and I will have this look or I will go to dinners because it's kind of nice. <laughs> I will go to dinners and to drinks and I will wear this outfit and I wore it to a Christmas dinner, I'll wear it to another Christmas dinner. That's my look right now and I don't need it to be something different because it really represents exactly who I am right now and how I want to be seen. So I really like doing that, yeah, and I've let go of this idea of not needing to repeat outfits. However, I do know that this outfit-based approach doesn't work for everybody because it can feel a bit too rigid and constricting. I think this is like an essence thing, by the way, but uh, whatever. The point is, I know it doesn't work for everybody. And in that case, if you have this more intuitive approach, I would call this kind of like 
<laughs> the chaotic freedom Tetris approach, which is like, to be real, probably what you are doing with your wardrobe right now anyway, what most people do. You buy a pair of, you know, polka dot shorts or something, right? I'm really obsessed with shorts lately. <laughs> you buy a pair of polka dot shorts and you're like, okay, I know exactly how I'm gonna wear this. I have this white turtleneck, I have these black boots, and I have this really cute black and white bag. It's gonna be so adorable. That's the first outfit. But then you're like, okay, what else can I wear these with? But instead of just putting them with a red sweater and the same accessories, you're like, okay, I have a red sweater. So maybe now I wanna have my gold sparkle like earrings, you know? And you're like, start thinking about what is it that makes this new look unique, this black, red and white combination. So it's not just the same shorts with different colored tops, like in the capsule approach, but it's actually creating multiple interesting looks using the same items. And you probably just have a ton of stuff, so you bring some things out. Maybe you buy one or two new things for some of the different new outfits you create. Um, and some things are shared between outfits and some aren't, but that's just like normal, right? And the benefits of this, of course, is like, yeah, there's no need for a coherent aesthetic, but you still retain this original expressiveness because you're asking yourself what makes this outfit interesting, what makes it unique, and you're still opening yourself to possibilities. You're like, okay, I got this new shorts. You know, right now I don't need a new outfit, but in the next two months, I'm gonna think about a new way to style it and maybe I'll get something new. Maybe I'll keep my out for like a funky orange sweater, you know? Um, so you're like letting yourself have this exploration and this play and it's not like the set it and forget it method. So yeah, that's my visualized alternatives to the capsule wardrobe. Really hope that you enjoyed this video. Love to hear what you think and see you next time. Bye.